Okay, EV versus cycles. Uh, well, not not versus, or more uh, how to get your EV renders to look like cycles. So I've been reluctant to make this video just because I don't actually have any good tricks for it. I just do a few basic things, and EV tends to just look really good. But um, on the chance that you haven't really gotten into EV yet, I I am more than happy to to walk through that. So. This is the uh, the Blender Splash screen from from last year, and this is it in Eevee, and this is it in Cycles. And I didn't really have to do much to optimize it, and they just it looked pretty good. Cycles to me looks a little bit better, but also it wasn't made for Cycles, and so it, this was or it wasn't made for Eevee. It was made for Cycles, and so uh, seeing how it holds up, you know, when it's dumped into Eevee isn't totally fair because it wasn't optimized for Eevee. But uh, you can see the, the two things that I think are the biggest issue are one, the reflections fade out near the edge of the screen. And that's because it's a screen space reflection, which means it's using the data within the field of view uh, for, for the reflection. And if it's close to the edge, it can be reflecting something that's out of that field of view. And so um, it just fades out. The other one is Eevee doesn't play as nicely with emissive materials. Emissive materials don't actually cast light, um, or at least not by default. Whereas in Cycles, they do that no problem. Uh, so like right here, this video texture in Cycles, it refracts all nice and diffuses, and I, I love it. In uh, Eevee, without additional tweaking, it wasn't going to do that. So first, let's go into the extreme basics. I've got this scene right here, and if I render it in Cycles, it looks, it looks pretty good. Actually, it's been fun. As I wait for the final sound mix, I've been going through old shots that were kind of nice shots, but they didn't really have like a, a central focus or a thing to look at, and I've just been trying to add little specific details to fill out to fill out the shots a little better, and uh, that feels good. Uh, and this is just the usual cycles thing with the denoiser going on. And if I change it from cycles to Eevee, reprocess the shaders, and yeah, that looks, that looks fairly similar. Uh, the things I'll do right off the bat is these checkboxes here. I'll check ambient occlusion. And the biggest thing is I'll crank up the distance here. And you can see now we're getting some shadows in between the people. The stairs pop here. If I toggle that, you can see the stairs really come out. Um, and that's that's a lot of it. And bloom with the neon is kind of a, a nice effect. It's easy to overdo it, but I, I do like it. And screen space reflections means that you know we get those reflections reflected there in the tile if you've got a, a good computer and all that you can check some of these and turn up precision i honestly don't really see a big difference <laughs> between any of this um the one the one thing that does affect speed a lot is ambient occlusion i made a project file and i tried to make the frame rate 100 frames per second so i could see what would give me more or less frames per second and the biggest thing that affected the playback, the the FPS I could get, was the ambient occlusion. It jumped, it jumped from like 40 down to like 26 or something. And so that's this is a huge factor. But considering it also, I think makes the biggest impact on the scene. That's uh, it's it's your call. And motion blur won't show up in the viewport. I don't I don't think, but it does show up in in renders. And so that's that's a good thing to know. So those are the basics. And let's let's jump over into the slightly less basic. Okay, so until I think 2011, uh, this is what we were working with in Blender. And this was just regular ray tracing. The camera shoots out a ray to the surface and it bounces it over to the light. It sees how intense the light is, the distance, the angle of the surface, and it gives you back you know, a pixel value. If there's an object in the way, like this sphere here, and it can't reach the light, you just get your, your value of zero and that's, that's where we get the shadows from. Um, but it's not particularly realistic. And so that's where it's, uh, we got path tracing with cycles where the light would start to actually bounce around. So right uh, over here, if I turn the total number of bounces from zero to one, you can see the light will bounce off of the ground here and bounce back up to hit the underside of the sphere and all of that. Very, it looks more realistic already. If we turn it up again, it'll actually bounce off of the ground, off the bottom of the sphere and back down to fill in this shadow. And it just keeps going like that. I think the default value is usually like 12 bounces or so, uh, which is very cool. Except that if we go over to Eevee, we're back in 2011 territory. In fact, even even worse, because what's this big <laughs> this big thing right here? Um, okay, so how, how do we bounce that light around? It's, it's very straightforward. It's just this thing called an irradiance volume. And so 
Actually, first, if you ever want to increase the resolution of the shadows, you can just go under the render settings to shadows. And cube size is regular point lights, and I think spotlights. Cascade size, for some reason, yeah, it tells you right there. That's the, uh, the resolution of the sun shadows. And so I'm going to crank that up to, you know, like 2,000. And now all the shadows are just a lot more crisp. Um, okay, I'm going to go into wireframe mode here and add that irradiance volume. And so this is this is a cube full of points, and every point inside the cube is is effectively a light probe. It looks out in all directions and sees what the lighting environment is like at that point, and uh, then it'll apply those values to any geometry it happens to be near. So I'm gonna scale this up. Um, any any dots that are inside the like the sphere would just read as black because they can't see anything, and that can actually introduce. Uh, randomness sometimes that maybe you don't want so I try to avoid that if possible and I try to avoid having points you know like under the ground just because they're not going to be doing anything um, if you click on this tab here you get the object properties for the irradiance volume so I'm going to change these to like six um, cool and actually let's let's make it a little taller yeah there we there we go cool all right, and if we go back, nothing's changed because we still have to bake it. And that's the process of it looking in all directions and seeing what the lighting is like. So I'm going to go back into the render properties here. And under the uh, indirect lighting, I just click bake indirect lighting. And it's bouncing everything around. And now we have a result that's very much like like cycles here. Um, a few things that we can still that we can still tweak. Um, first, there's this darn shadow or this not this lack of shadow there should be a shadow right here but the sun is still shining through and you can go into the the sun lamp and tweak you know the the bias and the the cascade all you, you can tweak stuff and try to fix it the easiest way by far i found is actually give the wall a little thickness so i'm going to select all this geometry and hit alt e extrude faces along normals and just actually make it have some thickness and that fixes that fixes the whole thing um, you'll notice it's not totally smooth here, and we can change that by sliding some of this stuff around here. Uh, that's, as always, that's at the expense of accuracy. And the one thing I can say is if there's any sort of texture on these materials, that disappears immediately. And you can also go in and, you know, increase the resolution of the radiance volume. But this ends up, uh, I, I guess I tend to make very textured scenes, but this has never actually bothered me in any, any practical situation and look now you can move it around it's it's all it's all real time if we were to go in here and change this ground from like blue to green it doesn't affect anything we still have to go in and rebake the uh the indirect lighting and there we go okay let's say you want to add like a, a pond we got our glossy material right here and it is not showing anything at all. So let's go into our render settings, I'm gonna turn on screen space reflections, and it's kind of doing, it's doing a bit, but I don't think it's actually showing us anything that we can't already see in the render. Like it's reusing this data, but displacing it, which means we can't see the underside of the sphere. We can just see the parts we can see reflected in the reflection, which isn't totally great. Uh, can we fix this? Yes, yes we can. Right next to the irradiance volume, there's a reflection plane. So I'm gonna add that and just line it up with the uh, the water. And you can see now now it's different. It's a uh, scale it up. And now we can see what we wanna see, which is cool. And there, there are more settings, you know, here too. Distance and, and all of that. And one more thing I should definitely throw in here. Here, F3, images is planes. Gonna bring in one of my steams here. And let's say we want to put this into, into the scene. Uh, we'll open up the shader editor. I've got a translucent. I've got a transparent. And I put them together into a mix shader here. And I'm going to use the brightness of the steam to control the mix between the two. Oh, and plug it into the surface. And what do we got here? OK, I think it's backwards. Here, I'll swap them. Boop. can never remember which comes first. And this this works pretty good, except it's casting a big shadow. And so you can do you can do two things here under the material properties. You go down to uh, yeah settings and blend mode. Yes, alpha blend. If you can't see through, make sure it's set to alpha blend. Sometimes it's opaque, and you just get wow. That's that's pretty gross. Yeah, make sure this is alpha blend if you're doing transparency. 
And Shadow, I usually just set it to none because why, you know, I don't think the Steam needs to be casting Shadow in most situations. But you can also do Alpha Hashed and it'll actually, you know, calculate it. It just takes a second for it to it to refine, but it looks good in renders. And it looks good on that, that sphere. And I think it goes without saying, but you only get the EV settings when you have the render engine set to EV and the cycle settings when you're when you're in cycles. But yeah, you can see these look effectively, effectively the same. Um, I still prefer cycles, especially as like cycles X, everything's rendering, you know, seven times faster, whatever, and GPUs are getting faster and cycles is getting more optimized. I, I'm like, let's just bounce all, all of the lighting around. Um, but being able to, again, in, in the case of the this, this is or I can't even tell which one this is. Okay, this is Eevee. This was like 10 seconds. This was 10 minutes. And so it's it's definitely a render time a render time issue. And let's see, other stuff I'd want to add. Oh, you can have like extremely high res. You know, we have this irradiance volume here. We can have another one here. And it'll just add them all together and, and you know, just increase the resolution. So a lot of my scenes, I'll have a big overall um, irradiance volume and they'll have specific ones like in interiors and in rooms and places where I really want the lighting to affect stuff because uh, here let's say I have a cube and I give it this bright emissive uh, color here like that's that's nice that just works automatically in cycles if we go into Eevee it doesn't light up anything unless if you have the irradiance volume going and then the points nearby will see this uh, color here and it'll make things glow. Unfortunately, if this is animated, it's not going to move the irradiance volume, um, which is just the thing you kind of have to work with. Another thing, uh, in cycles, this setup works no problem. You know, each emissive cube is just radiating onto the wall. If we go into Eevee, uh, even if we rebake it, there isn't going to be enough resolution for that to uh, for that to affect anything. It looks like it is, but that's actually the reflections the the lighting isn't doing anything at all and that's just because you have to have a crazy resolution on the radiance volume to be able to get like that data so it's actually hitting the wall properly and so that's that's just the thing to keep in mind as you're setting up the scene um if you're gonna have like flashing you know uh just try not to use m uh, emissive materials at least small ones a lot of times you can you can supplement it with a point light and that's what's cool is like point lights will still totally work mixed all in this is just playing on top of the radiance volume and i really like that everything can play nice together like that i know this is kind of an ugly test scene but uh, it demonstrates some stuff and honestly yeah it does tend to work better in kind of chaotic scenes where where the precision of the lighting isn't 100 percent accurate um that's why a lot of my big scenes tend to be fairly forgiving honestly whereas something right here where you can see the splotches in between the different paths is a little bit of a of a bummer but yeah anyways Good talking to you. I will. I will talk to you soon. I think there's gonna be thing we're gonna get to release the episode this week, so I'm I'm very excited.